In the last video we started creating data capture uh, program and now we're going to continue this. I'm going to call this one version 2. And before doing anything I'm going to click on file, save as, and I'm going to save it as data capture. I'm just going to put v2 at the end. It's a good idea to get into the habit of saving the programs that you create as different versions in case uh, as you develop them, just in case you make any mistakes and you want to revert back to the previous um, version of it so that you can carry on with it. So in this simple program we've got, we've got some print statements which is printing a message to the user and then it's asking for the user's name and replying almost like a conversation to the input of the user and at the end it's got a summary print statement which just prints out the information that has been collected back to the user. So a very simple use of print statements and the inputs. And remember the sort of the way that the input statement is made up, it's saying create a variable called name and name is equal to the input which follows which the user inputs uh, after this is displayed on the screen. So after what is your name is displayed on the screen, then you're just going to type in the name and that is going to be assigned to input. So that's the kind of idea behind this input and how it works. So age is equal to the input whenever the user is shown the message. What is your age? And so on. So very simple idea. In this next version, we're going to use something which is called an if statement. So what we're going to do is we're going to check the actual value entered by the user. And if it is a certain value, then we're going to return a different message. So the way that actually works is we've got an if and an else. And the best way to do that is just to do a simple example. So we're going to do for name, rather than just having print out that it's cool, I want to check if name is equal to James, let's say. If name is equal to James, And we're going to make that a string. And you notice here that it we're saying if name is exactly equal to this, the two equals signs min. And that's what we use to check if one thing is exactly equal to another. At the end of this, we need a full colon, which is just shift and the button beside L or the semi semicolon button. Press enter, and you'll notice that it is indented. Within loops or conditional statements, statements within Python, what happens is, is Python will follow down the left hand side until it gets into the loop and then what it will do then is it will follow inside this loop and once this is left it will go back to the left hand side indentation. So it is important that these indentations exist and you will see that it's four across, one, two, three, four. But it does happen automatically after you put in your full colon and press enter. So if names is equal to if names equal to James, what I want to do is I want to print out I want to print Whoa, I have an uncle James. I'm going to remove this one. Actually, I'm going to keep it there for a second. I'm sorry, in a minute. If name is equal to James, print out whoa, I have an uncle, James. I'm going to delete back to the side, and I'm going to say else if, which means it's going to check if the name is equal to James, and it's also, if that's not true, it's then going to check this. If name is equal to, is exactly equal to Sam, oh, it's going to print out then, full colon, print, are you related to the fireman, etc. So funny responses to the names possibly, you can obviously put them whatever you want for that. And then we can do as many else ifs if we want. We could have if names equal to James, else if names equal to Sam, else if names equal to Joe, Harry, Bob, whatever. And then at the end of that, we're probably going to want an else. What this does mean, what this will do, or what this means, 
is that it will check and if none of these conditionals are met it will return this message and in the else again you can see it has to be indented I'm just going to print out the print message so I'm going to delete that up cool that's a nice name so you can see this first piece of code now looks slightly different than the rest now if we press F5 on that press OK what is your name so I'm going to type in Sam and if my program works correctly it should ask me am I related to the fireman so you can see that's happened it's printed out that question as well and then it's asked me what is the age and let's just try that again and it is always worthwhile to check all of your options so the first one was James oh I have an uncle James so you can get the idea that it's working it's checking as it comes in the user enters a name that's checking if the name is equal to James do this else if the name is equal to Sam do this and you can continue on having as many else's or as many else ifs as you want and then at the end you have an else statement which basically just means if none of these statements are true then do this so in this one we're checking is the name exactly equal to you know James Sam or whatever we can also and we'll do it on age we can do that in a slightly different way we can check if it's greater than less than or equal to so with age we're going to do the same sort of idea it's going to be an or if conditional I'm going to say if age is less than 10 I want the computer to print out so again it's going to be a string you are really young across else if age is less than let's say if age is less than 20 it might ask the user or it might print out you should be at school or you should be studying maybe do you know what else if for this one else if age is greater than 40 it's going to print out you're really old so along those lines um, and then I'm going to have <coughs> one more else if else if age is less than 100 will do and we'll explain this in a second Please tell me about the good old days. These have been say quotes. And then at the end you're gonna have an else statement, which is just gonna print out our you the oldest person in the world I'm now going to delete this print because I've changed that so again we give more options in the program and what should happen is it's going to print out so it's going to come in it's going to ask for the user's name and then depending on the name it's going to do one of these three things if it's equal to James it's going to do this if it's equal to Sam it's going to do this or else it's just going to print out cool that's a nice name then it's going to ask the user for their age and then at this point it checks if the age is less than 10 
it's going to print out you're really young so if you type in four that is going to be return you're really young and then it will move down to the next question if it's not less than 10 let's say it's 12 it won't do anything for this section of, of the if conditional it will go into this part and it will return you should be studying if the age is greater than 40 it will say you're really old if it's less than 100 so it will include everything let's say if it is less than 40 instead actually you are let's change it to getting old so it's less than 20 they're going to say you should be studying if it's the age is less than 40 but not less than 20 then it's going to return you're getting old and then it's going to say else if the age is less than 100 so for every other value between 40 and 100 it's going to do oh well, actually 99 because it's less than 100 it's going to say tell me about the good old days or else it's going to print out are you the oldest person in the world so if we f5 that now click on ok see how that works what is your name jimmy cool it's a nice name so i'm going to type in first of all eight traceback error unoperable strands so we can't compare a string to an int so same sort of idea if age is less than 10 so what i need to do in each of these actually i can do it up here i could do it in here by saying convert that to an int for each one but that would mean me having to do three or four times so an easier way to do that is just going to be to up here where we ask for the age is to put that inside the int function so age is equal to an int and is the result of the input so it's a nice quick easy way to do that i think that should work f5 that name is jimmy what is my age my age is four first of all you're really young so you can see that's breaking out here because it's less than 10. let's x that and f5 it again what is your name jimmy what is your age let's try 11 this time see what happens let's tell me that I should be studying because it's, it's greater than 10 but not greater than 20 let's close that let's f5 that again jimmy it doesn't really matter what i put in there what is your age less than 40 so let's say 38 press enter now it's telling me that I'm getting old because we're breaking out down here. It's greater than 20, but it is not greater than 40. So this is where it's breaking out. Press F5 now. Again, I'm going to type in Jimmy. This time I'm going to type in 40. And that is the first age which will break this part. Because age is checking is 40 less than 40, the answer is going to be no. Whereas is 39 less than 40, the answer would be yes. Um, so if we do that now, it's going to, going to, just going to say, Tell me about the good old days. So that is why it's skipping that one and it's up here because it is not less than 40, but it is less than 100. And that would be true for, from the ages of 40 up to 99. And now if I type in the last example, just to make sure that that's working, I can say F5 that. Type my age is Henry this time, just for a change. My age is 127. Press enter. It's asking me, am I the oldest person in the world? Okay, so that's a look at how we can use the if else conditionals. And what that's doing is that's testing the input of the user or the result of a calculation or whatever we want it to actually test it could be the value of a sensor which is input into the system but in this example it's testing the input from the user and if it's equal to this it's just for name is equal to james or sam or it's going to do one of these two things otherwise for every other name it's going to print out cool that's a nice name and then for age we're doing slightly different checks we're checking if the age is less than 10 do this else if it's less than 20 do this else if it's less than 40 do this else if it's age is less than 100 do this and then at the end is it uh, else print out 
So that's going to happen for every other age above the age of 100. And that's the sort of idea that we can do and we can use this to develop. So rather than each user getting the same message input from the system, the user is going to be, the message input to the user is going to be determined by the actual values that they enter in. So we can make the programs a lot more intuitive and a lot more enjoyable for the users to actually use.